All right, so today I decided I was gonna give a tour of my observatory. Um, I was kind of hoping clouds would uh, clear up, but uh, as you can see behind me, <coughs> that's definitely a no-go. See, maybe later tonight I'll be lucky. So, see if I can all the way down here. So it's a sky shed pod. And uh, yeah, works pretty good when it's not covered by small black, I don't even know what these are. Apparently little flies of some sort. Awesome, that's new today. All right. All right. So first we're gonna start the mount. Uh, so I have a Losman D GM8 mount and it is using the digital drive system. So I've updated the worm gear with the O-Vision worm gear. Um, it's a little bit better than the stock uh, worm gear in terms of being able to track, etc. And that's for the RA. And for the deck, the deck I'm using the stock. I'm still using the stock motors, although I do have a upgraded motor for the RA access. Um, over here, I still have to install. And for polar alignment, I'm using the QHYCCD Pullmaster, which is installed here. That basically covers the uh, polar scope um, viewport, which I still have installed here in order to do polar alignment using the dedicated camera. And what I've done is actually, I've gotten these 90 millimeter um, clamshells from William Optics, which I'm using on the Zenith Star uh, 80 millimeter um, ED2. Two. And uh, what I've done is on the back, Right now I'm using it for guiding, so it has the Orion uh, Star Shoot Auto Guider on it. Um, but I also have the William Optics um, Field Flattener and Focal Reducer version 4.0, um, which is actually quite nice because you can actually change focus by just rotating this. So you're not necessarily playing around with the actual focus tube. Um, this has a good advantage because at this point it's sort of... Uh, I've had it for a while and I'm the second owner and it's starting to uh, not grip as well as I would like. So I've sort of tightened it down there. Um, on top, and yes, instead of actually using the uh, clamshell here, I've actually used the foot that came with the William Optics here and then used a scope stuff accessory that's basically a, a Vixen mount to hold the red cat foot, which is mounted above. Now. On here, I do have the Astro or Deep Sky Dad uh, Autofocus System 2S um, for the William Optic Scope. I haven't actually got around to using it too much because I found that it doesn't really change focus that much during the night. Like, pretty much start and end is about the same, so I'm not too worried about that. So I may actually have take this and put it on the Edge HD for autofocus because I'm having a bit more trouble getting that into focus than the Red Cat because it has the uh, Badenoff mask in the uh, hood. And otherwise, it's a stock um, Red Cat. Um, I don't have the back end, etc. right now. I just have the back end. Uh, so this is a 2-inch filter holder. And then this is the uh, T-mount adapter to Nikon um, F-mount, which I then connect uh, to the FTZ mount, which I'll show you in a second here. So I have a Nikon Z6 here set up as my imaging camera. The Nikon FTZ adapter is right here. The reason I'm using this is because um, there's currently no T minus mount or T mount for the uh, Nikon Z that I could find. Um, I think there's a couple that are coming up right now, but since I already had the F mount adapter, this setup works. However, it does mean that I have the full um, back focus of a normal Nikon digital SLR. With this setup here, I'm imaging with the Red Cat and I'm guiding with the Zenistar. Both of them are William Optic Scopes and until I sort of come up with a slightly better guiding solution, this is sort of 
my don't spend any money with what you already have setup. However, I do have a second setup for narrow field astrophotography, which I'm going to now put together. So I do have a pier and it makes an absolutely wonderful laptop mount. Um, in a couple weeks, I'm going to see if I can actually pour some concrete and actually have it attached somewhere. And then I will uh, move the mount from the tripod onto the uh, pier. And then I'll have to guess find a new laptop holder. Anyhow, yeah. So everything comes through one USB port. I should mention that I'm connecting to the uh, computer. I have a, it's called the Nextech uh, USB adapter. Um, yeah, it's nothing special. I just got one and it seems to work well to the, my laptop, but I've had this guy for quite some time. It's just a Dell Latitude laptop E6430. It is an i7. I did put extra RAM in it, so it's 16 gigs, but that's more than enough to handle pretty much all the tasks I have with it. Nothing too special. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna switch over to the other scope setup so that you can sort of see what it ends up being. So besides the lovely bird ensemble playing in the background, um, this is sort of the setup. So with the Celestron HHD 8 inch, um, I use a uh, Telrad mounted to the scope to find targets. I just normally do it line of sight with the uh, Red Cat, it's pretty wide, but uh, the Edge HD is kind of narrow. So I'm really happy with it, it works well. I do have some particular gear improvements I would like to make over time. I have put a link below uh, to all the equipment in this setup, plus a few upgraded pieces I think that if you were to buy today, you definitely would want to go for versus some of the older equipment I have. And otherwise, yeah. And this is the uh, Celestron OAG setup. So again, we have the Nikon Z6 imaging, and there's a prism in here, or mirror, that then allows me to guide using the same Starshoot Auto Guider. Although, to be honest, this is not the best setup, as this guy is not as sensitive as one might think for an F10 scope, but it does do a good job as long as you find a bright star. So I have a couple heat straps, or do, do heater straps, they're all from Kendrick at the moment, and then I have this uh, DigiFire 7 digital controller. This is probably the oldest piece of technology here, as um, there's a lot more dew heaters that are available on the market these days, but it does well and it's uh, continued to kick uh, forward. Um, down below I have the lithium ion deep cycle battery. I have a 20 amp hour one, which is pretty small for I think a lot of bigger astrophotographers that have a lot of gear and several scopes and stuff. For me and my system, since I don't have GoTo and I'm running the computer off the mains, this does really well. It will get me through a night of imaging, actually about three, but apparently not four. So it does a good job. And I had a friend basically um, take the cable and go with power poles into a splitter that we made custom that then powers all the devices um, that I've shown so far. So that sort of concludes the studio tour. I do have one little item I did forget. Well, my laptop basically reboots in my backpack. And that's this. You may have seen me use these in some videos. Brilliant bright light. You press a button, it turns red. This is really nice. I really enjoy using these. Um, so this here is uh, the uh, well, if I rotate it here, so it's the NY360 to, um, from, I don't even know how to pronounce that, but yeah, I'll have it in the comments below. Um, I really like using this uh, for setting up and stuff because it doesn't really blow up my night vision. Um, as you can see here, it's not that bright um, when, it's, when it's not being dropped on the floor. <clears throat> yep. There we go. I'm gonna reacquire my face. It's gonna reacquire my face. So yeah, so that's the observatory. It works quite well. A um, couple tips with the uh, sky shed pod, um, especially if you're here in Canada. Um, generally right now it's facing north because we're done with winter, but during winter you're definitely gonna wanna have the uh, inner dome facing south so that during the day when there's sunlight, it melts the snow off, um, makes it a lot easier to clean. Originally I had it pointing north uh, just because it's easier to open and close. 
and uh, yeah it was a pain in the winter because the ice would get stuck and it would still be covered and then I'd have to really clean it off so other than that little tidbit this has worked really well for me uh, I'm super happy and uh, yeah I like saying and yeah so I'm gonna end the video here. That was sort of my virtual tour of uh, the equipment I have in my little tiny observatory here. Uh, it works great, and I'm hoping to get a lot of uh, imaging here in 2020. As you all know, we're sort of uh, stuck where we are. So I'm going to uh, take advantage of that and uh, do some uh, fun imaging as my glasses slowly darken in the sky, sunlight. You're wondering why I'm wearing a hat. All right, that's it for me, clear skies which I still don't have. <laughs>